Um, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, our webinar is on the impact of COVID-19 on small businesses, both here in Vermont and around the country. We have some really wonderful guests joining us uh, that I'll introduce in just a minute, but they'll be sharing their perspective on what Vermont small businesses are facing at this time, as well as hopefully um, give us all uh, an idea of what we can do. So um, I'm Maeve Power. I work on the communications team here at VPIRG, focusing specifically on our COVID-19 response. Um, as many of you know, VPIRG has been working since 1972 to advance our mission of promoting and protecting the health of Vermont's people, its environment, and its locally based economy. Um, and during times like these, uh, it's definitely uh, really obvious that we have to stay committed to upholding that mission. And we're doing that by prioritizing urgent initiatives like um, ensuring safe and timely elections, combating scams and consumer abuse, abuses, which I'm sure we've seen examples of, um, and supporting our local economy in whatever ways we can. So we're also finding new ways like this webinar to connect with our members um, and provide opportunities for some virtual action and engagement. Um, so as our guests begin to share some of the, uh, their background and knowledge, feel free to submit some questions whenever they occur to you. You can do that in the chat. Um, I'll be monitoring that and presenting those questions to our guests whenever I, can, whenever I can. But like I just said to them before this, they can also feel free to answer those questions if they see them come in as well. <clears throat> so we'll have some time for questions at the end. I'll also be recording this webinar and posting it to our social media and on our website um, at vperg.org slash COVID-19. And on there you can access the webinars that we've already done um, as well as find some relevant resources in relation to the coronavirus. So without further ado, I'll introduce our guest. We have with us today Morgan Nichols of the Main Street Alliance of Vermont, uh, which is part of a national, the National Main Street Alliance, which advocates on behalf of small businesses across the country. And then we have Representative Matt Byron, who is both a state legislator and uh, the owner of Three Squares Cafe in Virgins, which is a wonderful place which we should all visit. But uh, with that, I will pass the torch on to Morgan. Hi everyone, <clears throat> thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight um, and for your interest in small in how uh, small businesses are kind of um, moving through this challenge. Um, as Maeve said, uh, Main Street Alliance started in uh, 2014, um, kind of came out of, um, uh, Main Street Alliance was built out of the Ameri uh, ACA, um, but Main Street Alliance uh, of Vermont is a chapter of the National Main Street Alliance. Uh, we've worked on uh, campaigns related to paid sick days, automatic voter registration, um, economic development um, supports um, in the paid family and medical leave campaign. Um, <clears throat> we represent a statewide network of over 700 businesses um, and our overall mission is to um, bring the voice of small businesses to the state house um, and to use that voice to develop and pass legislation um, and policy that supports small businesses and therefore our local economies. Um, yeah, so that's, that's Main Street Alliance. Um, I came to Main Street Alliance in November, um, this, this past November, um, and my background um, before that, it, what, I've worn a lot of hats, um, anything from supporting my uh, sister's small business here in Vermont. Um, uh, she runs a natural wine uh, bar in, in downtown Stowe. Um, to, I'm on the select board here in, in Stowe as well, um, and then worked in leadership development and also was an, uh, an art educator for about 11 years. So again, have worn a lot of different hats and then came to Main Street Alliance um, um, in November when I really wanted to make um, policy work um, my, my full-time uh, focus. Um, so I'm happy to be here. Um, would you like me to go in now to talk about um, advocacy for the fourth federal stimulus or do you want Matt to start or? Um, yeah, maybe Matt could actually do an introduction like you and then you can go forward with some questions. Sure. All right, um, no, thank you. So uh, my name is Matt Byrong. Uh, I am a state representative, small business owner and also board member of uh, Main Street Alliance of Vermont. So I, got, I get to wear several hats with this conversation. Um, so, I wound up, quick backstory on me, uh, I'm a career chef, primarily uh, uh, in fine dining, high-end food, 
um, in New York City, Boston, and Vermont. Uh, I was born and raised in Vermont, but um, took off in the mid late nineties to sort of um, expand on my culinary career. Came back uh, just shortly after nine eleven, actually. Um, weird date to measure by, but um, and then continued on with my career. In 2007, I bought uh, Three Squares Cafe, which is what I currently own. It's more of a casual um, model than what I used to do, but uh, I just found that, uh, that that style of food to be more fun at that point in my career. Uh, fast forward to about 2015, to Main Street Alliance of Vermont was just beginning. Um, and a uh, uh, woman by the name of Ashley Moore, who was actually a state director before Morgan, um, was a canvasser at the time and actually found me while doing surveys on Main Street. Um, we sat down, we had a really long and engaged conversation and I wound up becoming more actively involved with the organization, which is one of the primary springboards that got me into my current seat as a state representative. Um, so the advocacy I've worked on primarily through Main Street Alliance and with them, um, paid sick days legislation, um, things like Beyond the Box. Uh, we're still trying to get the details oriented on this program uh, with uh, the Green Mountain Secure Retirement, which is a retirement program that small businesses can have access to that's um, overseen and helped um, administered by the treasurer's office and yeah, family medical leave, a, a laundry list of things. So I guess that's you know a long story and a reasonably short soundbite for you. All right. Thank you, Matt. Um, we'll pass it back to uh, Morgan and we can get a little bit more into kind of the national story um, of what small businesses are facing right now and what the federal response is looking like. Great. So um, I've been on multiple calls with businesses from around the country um, and, and our national organization over and over and over again, every single time we're hearing um, that businesses need grants, not loans, um, that this crisis is putting them in a situation um, where they're already strapped and to potentially um, dig themselves further in with debt is not is not the need right now, and um, it's 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 a risk. Um, and while we acknowledge that the programs that have been put forth um, so far over the last three COVID bills um, are a step in the right direction, um, the work that we're doing right now on a federal level is to advocate for. Um, uh, direct cash injections to businesses. Again, grants, not loans, um, that we expand, that there is a um, overarching expansion and immediate cash flow that's put into small businesses to restore jobs and keep Main Street alive. Um, if we, you know, we've seen rampant unemployment across the country and, and the biggest concern that we're having that if we don't if we don't um, reconnect the links between businesses and then and their employees and if again we don't also have these um, direct cash infusions into businesses to keep them alive through this there won't be an economy for us to come back to and that by re-employing everyone that's been laid off and kind of keeping everyone whole as much as we can um, during this period of hibernation where that we're having to, to be in right now that we will be more secure and able to come back to work in a safe and connected way um, and recover um, faster over time. So that's the work that we're doing um, right now. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's our biggest, that's our biggest ask. Um, there are, there are, the list is longer, but that's our, that's our biggest priority for right now. And so that's for the fourth stimulus bill, right? Exactly. Um, so um, can you talk a little bit more about what that might look like um, in relation to, uh, you know, Vermont small businesses or just generally what that, what that looks like? Yeah. So over and over, I, I'm hearing about um, the eight week uh, limitation that the P, like the PPP, for example, right? You've got this, this eight week uh, term on this, 
on this package. Um, the concern is, is that if they get this loan or this, this forgivable loan and they use it for the eight weeks, and maybe that's going to be long enough to get them to a point where they start. Um, and especially in this servant service industry driven state, um, Yes, they'll be able to bring pe people back onto payroll um, and use that responsibly and thoughtfully and be able to get that forgiven. But then what happens after the eight weeks? Where are they going to go there that, at that point? Business is not going to come back um, at, at a rate where we're not, we're not going to come back at 100% exactly after that eight weeks is over. So um, again, this expansion of this program that's going to expand the term limits there and then con continue to create an expansion of the fund. The other, as, as we talked about earlier before we all got on the call, is at this point, this fund is only $350 billion. We've heard, we're hearing over and over again that by Saturday, um, uh, the, that there's a very, very high likelihood that this fund will, will run out um, much sooner than expected. Um, so how are we going to uh, ensure that more people are going to have access to this over time and in a way that allows them to try to remain whole for when business actually does come back? Um, yeah, I, I would say that that's, that's, that's the biggest thing that I'm hearing from Vermont businesses, especially as it relates to the service and hospitality industries. Yeah. So what would you say um, business owners right now should be doing to ensure that they get the support that they need? So everything that we're telling our, our membership to is to contact their, uh, their lenders mm -hmm. and to go through the process. I mean, is to make, well, let me, let me, let me take a step back. Main Street Alliance isn't going to um, necessarily advise. They're going to make sure that we know that our members know what is available to them. And the most important thing that we can advise them to do in, in that capacity is to say to talk to their lenders um, and, to, and to start that conversation and find out of the programs, which is if and which are best for them or if it's a combination of the two packages. Um, just, yeah, just to start that process. Additionally, um, because of extra federal money that's come down, the SBDCs, um, uh, have funding to be able to uh, provide guidance to small businesses to help um, navigate the intricacies of all of this whole process. So we're also, um, you know, communicating out to our membership, you know, start a conversation with these people. Um, and again, also with your lenders. Yeah. Matt, do you have anything that you would want to add to that? Yeah. I mean, I think you're, you're, you're focusing everybody in the right direction. I, I mean, I totally find what you're saying to be well taken and agreeable. Um, right now, it's it's so much information coming at such a high rate of speed, right? Um, I mean, Morgan and I are in positions where <clears throat> we talk about this every day. We've been talking about this every day, morning, noon, and night um, for weeks now. Um, so to the point with the loans and the different programs, uh, I mean, I recommend everybody who owns a business right now um put in applications on these things because it's going to take a little time to process and it'll give you some time to figure it out <clears throat> what's best for you i was having a conversation with my local lender last week when the ppp guidelines were coming out and we're being well we're, we're just starting to come out we're getting an idea of what the real framework and the structure we're going to look like and it seems like there's different components within that and then you have the uh, eidl loans which that ten thousand dollar grant is attached to that everybody's heard about mm -hmm. and i kind of um half jokingly irreverently like describe this as kind of a a choose your own adventure of economic crisis and i think it's kind of fitting to it where you know you're like the ppp might work for some businesses the eidl might work for some a blend of the two might work for others and one of the reasons that this is annoyingly complex is it kind of had to be because the landscape of our businesses are so broad and in they're all so unique that you can't really just like have this one program that this one sweeping program that you think is going to work for everybody mm -hmm. um so uh, at the state of vermont level before we as the legislature left the last week that we were up there when the the catastrophic reality of covid was becoming more real um you know a lot of us were throwing different ideas out as to what we needed to do and 
uh, myself and a handful of others were through, through uh, taking care of uh, restructuring unemployment insurance um, in certain ways. And fortunately, people listen to us. And that's where we very quickly moved a piece of legislation that really expanded just during the time that we're in this emergency, expanded access to unemployment insurance for the workforce, but also at the same time made sure that the experience rating wasn't impacted on the employers because this situation is of no fault of anyone's, right? It's a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the main points I was driving home with that was if we, we didn't take care of the, uh, the experience rating issue on the back end, employers, once they got re-rated in a year, would more or less be crippled before they were back on our feet. So it's like, you know, the states have to deal with things like that. The federal government are really your backfill to these big, broad, sweeping uh, financial support packages. So it's really, it's really important to understand all the moving parts that are going on right now. Um, you know, some of the questions I see popping up in the comment section too, which is a totally valid one. You know, it's like, are some employers, you know, hearing the employers are, are better off laying people off and doing X, Y, and Z. Yes and no. I mean, these situations are all totally different. I mean, if somebody right now is operating at 80% capacity with their employees, but they're running out of money, the PPP right now might be a windfall for them. It might be an awesome scenario. I was just, mm -hmm. I'm on the board of one of our state designated agencies, which deal with a lot of um, uh, uh, community services of Addison County, and we were walking through these scenarios for them. Now, like the PPP night might not work for me, my business. I might be better going off with these emergency disaster loans, but for their organization, this PPP was a no-brainer, right? So that's yeah. kind of the thing. I think also, especially for those who um, have healthcare as a part of uh, uh, as a part of their program, yeah. right? So bringing people on and making sure that they can then still have connection to their healthcare. The layoff, right. and I and, and I'm seeing Meg your uh, point about the service industry. Obviously, that's a. a can be a different um, situation depending upon the business. Um, but again, getting that connection back um, and, and making sure that uh, those businesses, that those employees, that connection again between, and that interconnectedness between the employee and the employer, I think is really, really important. And that's why something like the PPP is, is helpful. And it is the hope that as, um, either technical amendments are made as we move into COVID-4 or an additional packages get made that there is an exp expansion and extension to be able to continue these things as we move forward. At least that's, you know, that, that is part of um, the hope as we move forward. Well, when the federal treasury released the, the enhanced guidelines, I guess we'll call it for the PPP, whatever that was Thursday night before the thing went live Friday morning, um, a lot of things were changed. It became, at least in my opinion, more restrictive um, and less viable for a lot of businesses to take this stuff on. Um, that was the call of the treasury. Um, but one of the things that did give me a glimmer of hope was if you look at the 30 pager, it says interim guidelines. So they are giving themselves um, a window to, to modify these things as they go. Mm -hmm. um, the two month criteria with the PPP, it's my belief, and I've discussed this with others that feel the same way, that it's set in this two month block so it can be extended. They'll have the apparatus and the structure there. And then as weeks go on, we have a better grasp of what the future looks like. It provides the opportunity to just push these programs out further. So um, they are building these large um support programs with the ability to be nimble well that's great um have you either of you is there a difference between what's happening here in vermont and what's happening nationally and at, being a state legislator wh what are you what are the conversations like at the state level um and how would they differ from other states um i have been on some national calls um over the weeks and one thing that surprised me uh, we were actually really ahead of the curve on a bunch of topics the the unemployment piece in particular um we child did care, a, child mm -hmm. care. Yeah. uh we really expanded a lot within our healthcare apparatus to help um people move more swiftly um with providing care for people kind of um taking some of the administrative burdens away. 
Um, I mean, we did a, God, it was like probably a 40 page, 35 page healthcare bill the same day we did the unemployment insurance mm -hmm. one. Um, so I think Vermont went into it with a lot of foresight. We were never looking at this the way a lot of other states were in, in a dismissive manner. We took it very seriously right away. And I think that was to our benefit um, in, in setting up, um, you know, a process and structure for the state of emergency for us to operate quickly and be able to, you know, to respond to these things, whether it's like healthcare oriented, business oriented, social support networks, whatnot. Uh, we did a lot to give ourselves the freedom to be flexible while this is going on. Um, I have not seen, yeah, I have not seen that at, at, with a lot of the other states. They are there. We were proactive. They're being reactive. And that's not true for all of them. I think California has done a wonderful job being proactive. Um, I think in New York, I mean, they're, they're the anomaly right now where they just got hit so hard and fast. Um, so that's where I see a lot of uh, positivity in this kind of dark scenario. From a business standpoint, um, I think that our, I think our trials and tribulations are very, um, are very similar. Um, just the, <clears throat> overarching fear about how we're going to come out of this. What are the rules and regulations about what this is going to look like for businesses as they reopen? Um, I think, you know, as I listen to businesses in each and every single one of my calls, um, not that they don't want, not that they want to be told what to do, but they want to know that they're going to be made whole um, and that, that they're going to have the supports that they need to be able to weather this storm because this isn't any fault of theirs, right? It is, it's, it's like a natural disaster, right? It's like a tornado that has come through and they need to be made sure that they're going to be made whole on the other side of this. Um, so I think in terms of the state response that, that creates a, um, ooh, pardon me, um, an impact and a difference, um, for how businesses are feeling, but overarchingly, um, on the federal response, um, we're just hearing over and over again, grants, not loans. Um, so, um, and, and with that, and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I put this in the chat as well. Um, Main Street Alliance of Vermont um, has a, as a COVID-19 website that we're specifically using for all things COVID. Um, that is www.smallbizbiz. Um, so smallbizcovid19, all one word, um, dot com. Uh, and I'll put it in the chat right now. And um, that will, uh, we have resources. We have an outline of um, all three bills that have passed. We have an opportunity for people to get involved um, to our sign on letter to tell their stories. So if businesses have a story to tell, um, we will then, um, we can use this um, with your permission as we need to continue to advocate on the federal level. Um, so that's um, a resource that we have. That is really awesome. I think being able to share as many stories from small business uh, owners is is going to be really important as we continue in this in your work advocating on the the federal and the state level for for good policy. Um, you know, in the realm of positivity, you know, you see a lot of non-essential restaurants and all these turning to takeout. And um, I know myself, I've been using this as an excuse to buy even more food from my favorite local restaurants. Um, but you know, for businesses that don't really have that option, like bookstores, hardware stores, um, things like that, uh, you know, what are their options? Do they have any options to, um, and are you seeing any creative um, sort of ways of handling this in Vermont? I think that um, <clears throat> what I'm seeing is that they're moving to an online platform as best as they can. Um, I know that Vermont Glove, um, Oh, I'm forgetting what town that they're in. Uh, Randolph. She, pardon? Is it Randolph? Is it Randolph? Sounds I think like so. Yeah. Um, and they're actually not members necessarily. I just I just heard their story and it was really wonderful. They've they've completely switched gears to be working on protective equipment, which is really um, dynamic and and nimble. Um, and I think that that's one thing that. Um, the, the, the mutual aid response here in Vermont was so overwhelming and so fast to see how people could connect from a volunteer standpoint. Um, and everyone was looking to see, um, to create a, an online portal where everyone could um, share what their business, like the new business model is and what their online offerings were. Um, I know that lovevermont.com um, website where businesses can share what it is that 
their offerings are now during this scenario. Um, I know that uh, certain restaurants, uh, I know that uh, Skinny Pancake is working to provide shift meals on behalf of um, all of the um, uh, servers and uh, line cooks and, and people who work in the service industry. Um, and then I know that other um, restaurants are provide, are looking to create um, interconnectivity between their vendors um, who whose supply chains have completely disappeared. And, and so this is an example from my family, I apologize. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're taking in vendors who would be providing typically to restaurants and creating a bag that people can purchase um, uh, uh, locally, but then also provide a give back um, pack to um, uh, essential care workers at a local hospital, which was, which was great. So, um, kind of allowing vendors who are so dependent on the restaurant industry to potentially continue um, some revenue. That's great. Matt, do you have any, um, any uh, stories that you've been hearing? Uh, from what, I mean, what we've seen out of our local um, retail right now is a little bit more of a um, and I'm just speaking like in, in, in Addison County where I am. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit more of a duck and cover approach. Um, everybody right now is just kind of like laying low. Um, I tried doing the takeout thing for uh, maybe five days. And it just didn't, it, it didn't jive for a couple of different reasons. The economics just really weren't there. Um, as well as, I mean, there were certain, you know, distancing and, and health and safety concerns with interacting with the staff, even doing the curbside thing. So we actually just decided, my management team and I just unanimously decided to take like a timeout um, and reevaluate, you know, once this situation was a little bit more known. Um, and we've seen that with a bunch of our other retailers. Um, I agree with Morgan that a lot of people shifting to, in, in retail especially, moving to online is a great idea. Um, I've actually been pushing that with my local retailers to do that anyway you know like have a your storefront be sort of the face of an online presence mm -hmm. and not just rely strictly on foot traffic so i mean i think that was a good idea before this even happened mm -hmm. i think it's going to really help propel that um so my my kid my um sous chef kitchen manager slash partner um at the cafe and one of the other restaurants that chose this um uh, shut down They've actually been working with our uh, Virgin's Area Boys and Girls Club. Um, they saw a spike in the demand on their meals. So what we've been doing is um, our kitchen team has been working with our kitchen teams uh, have been working with the Boys and Girls Club to actually uh, produce and execute the meals for the five day a week meal obligation for them. Um, so it just kind of keeps everybody doing something good. It keeps them doing something. Um, and it, you know, and it also just helps maintain a community bond and tie with everybody. Um, what happens in the future? I really don't know. I mean, we got to see what it looks like when we get our restrictions lifted. Um, uh, is it going to be like right before they did the total crampdown on restaurants where it was like half capacity up to 20, uh, up to 50 people, this weird like matrix of allowable bodies in a door who knows i mean so you really don't know um i think everybody needs to be prepared to you know be as creative as possible with these delivery formats and whatnot um i think there's a lot of i think there's actually a lot of potential in this for businesses to get creative or new businesses to emerge um i think people are going to find necessities and delivery mechanisms and different ways of doing things within this new structure and i think you're going to see some you know really creative new businesses pop up as a result so i mean there's always there's always somebody who captures the unknown in these moments of crisis so tbd totally it's a really good point um i will finish with just a last question if anybody um still tuned in has any questions you can uh throw them in the chat but what can you know people laymen like myself who do not own small bus businesses but want to you know do our part what do you think are the best ways for um them to do so um 
right now, I think the best way that you can support the local businesses that you, you know, I, I mean, they're the identities of main streets, right? You know, we've got our, our small towns, our small village centers. Um, I mean, even Burlington, our biggest city is a neighborhood in most cities. Um, buy gift cards, man. If they're putting up like one of those like GoFundMe things where it's like a couple of hundred bucks that gets you like a discount for life or this, that, or the other thing, throw in on that if you got the money. Mm -hmm. um, especially right now where these, these federal programs are so hard to figure out. The money's not flowing as fast as they said it was going to. You know, the couple of bucks that you can throw in to support them now is the bridge loan they wish they were getting from the government. Yep. So that's, that's the best thing I can throw on the table right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is just, you know, gift cards, pre-buys, things of that nature. You know, that's, that's the help you can really offer them. Yeah. Another thing that I've seen in my community, um, and I'm sure it exists around, are um, the donating meals through businesses who are actually cooking um, mm. and trying to stay open right now. Um, we have uh, an organization here that where you can buy um, buy a meal from a local place to to support our emergency responders um, or to uh, support the volunteer community who's helping um, or a local meal for someone in need within the community. Um, so I think that's another way of doing it. If you don't necessarily need food or um, something specifically for yourself, how can you um, support kind of just the current um, cash flow of a business to support those who are who are really doing some good frontline work um uh during this time so that's another another opportunity yeah well linda did it submit a um a comment about the difficulties that lodging facilities you know our bnb community in vermont are facing do you have any thoughts on on that um i i just spoke into um the addison county uh chamber chair or director excuse me um as well as the um owner operator of base and harbor which is in my district and one of the primary concerns they're having right now is the restrictions on bookings that were put into place um last week um where the booking the ability to book was suspended indefinitely um and i understand the huge frustration that is you know trying to plan your fall or even your 2021 um i there is a there is a push right now um, through the chambers and the other business associations um, to try and at least get a target date, whether it's like the beginning of June, middle of June, where you can start taking bookings again, to just actually start taking bookings um, for a date uh, further down the road. Um, I know that the lodging industry is one of the more frustrated ones right now um, as a result of the restrictions just put into place. Um, the that and that and realtors actually i've been hearing a lot from realtors lately yeah um so right now the you know the, i mean there's there's those ppp loans that a, a lodging uh entity could do if their staff is still on uh you know it keeps them in place and paid for a while even though you're not bringing it and cover some of your overhead costs i mean the ppp allows you to pay um rent utilities health care uh, some interest on certain loans. Um, so it, it really is, you know, a short term operating costs infusion. So, I mean, that's, that is one to look at. Um, and hopefully we see the, the, the downswing on cases to the point where the administration is comfortable lifting the restrictions on the, on the bookings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to Matt's point, I would, I would, I would just add that, um, uh, get loud about what it is that you're experiencing um, as an industry and as a as a um, as an industry to say uh, eight weeks isn't enough for us to to cover our bills right now and we need we need to expand what this is going to look like um, uh, as we move into COVID four. Um, so again, please don't hesitate to go to our website and sign on so you can organize with us and. Um, uh, and share your story. Um, and I know that uh, there's a lot of other organizations in the state who are doing really good work on your behalf as well, um, which is great. Um, so, but yeah, if we if we can help amplify um, on on your behalf, please please let us know, and we're happy to do that. So, and, and, and I'm just going to echo what Morgan was saying. It's it really is just like strength in numbers. Um, I've been working with a kind of an ad hoc group of hospitality um, folks for maybe three weeks 
Mm -hmm. four weeks and a lot of them are just like my industry peers and friends who I've known for 20 years or whatever um and my role as a legislator also just put me in a unique position to sort of be the like mouthpiece and the spearhead to get the information <clears throat> to um people in leadership positions in Montpelier but um it, I mean just like the, the more people you got backing you up the louder your voice is the more you can get done so you know, finding alliances, allegiances within these associations is wonderful. And I mean, I've even seen a lot of associations that were opposite ends of the table. Yeah. Given different situations. I had this happen to me personally, um, are all now teaming together. Uh, I mean, I, I am now allies with organizations that I never thought I'd be allies with. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of people find themselves in, in we're all in the same boat right now. We all got blindsided by this thing. So yeah, find, find an organization you think suits you and, and help them press the issue. The big real stimulus packages, the state's got some block grant maneuverability and things of that nature, but it's nowhere near as big as the bucket at the federal level. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would, I would target your uh, sentiments to the, to the federal delegations at this point. Okay. Well, I'll leave it there. Um, thank you both for joining us. I think the big takeaways are, you know, visit the website that Morgan put in the chat. I'll also put it um, along with the video whenever we post it on our website and our Facebook. Um, but get involved and use your voice. Buy some gift cards and support your local businesses in whatever ways that you have the capacity to do during these really difficult times. Um, but Matt, thank you. Morgan, thank you so much for being here. Uh, and um, definitely look out for some more info from VPIRG as we move forward. Uh, but thanks. All right, Maeve, thank you so much. And just so I, I put in my, I put, it, I put my email in the, um, oh, yeah. uh, in the chat as well, if anyone needs to reach out. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. All also, right. Matt, great fish poster. I'm upset I didn't see it before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for all you're doing yeah no problem no problem i mean and i'm i'm always on the clock so feel free to reach out to me with any you know questions or concerns morgan and i engage on like almost in a daily basis so you know any of the stimulus business related questions that could fall under an msa bucket you know she and i are in constant contact so feel free to you know get involved with main street alliance and you know any other businesses that you speak to who are interested in knowing more and doing more um, they're a wonderful conduit for, for this in every, you know, in most situations, but especially this one. So mm -hmm. thanks, Matt. All right, everyone. Take care. Have a good Have night. Good night. Thanks. Bye-bye.